Welcome to This Week from Blue Mountain Broadcasting. I'm Linnell Ellis, your host. I'm the president of Blue Mountain Broadcasting Association. And I'm really glad that you have tuned in to the show today. I have some important things to share with you both in our station news segment and with a very special interview with our project manager for the new facility, Keith Carlin, who's one of our board members and a volunteer at Blue Mountain Television. He always brings great energy when he shares with us and I can't wait to hear the updates from him. So please stay tuned for that. And also, uh, we are going to be spending some time with our devotional thought and let's start with that right now. Are we living in the last days? And what are the signs that the second coming of Jesus might be near? One day when Jesus was here the first time, he told his disciples many things that would happen before he came back again. And by the way, Jesus was standing in a very special place when he told his disciples what they could expect in the future. Long before Jesus was here in person and talking with his disciples, the prophet Zechariah prophesied about Jesus' second coming when he declared, on that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives east of Jerusalem, and the Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west, forming a great valley with half of the mountain moving north and half moving south. Well, guess where Jesus was standing when he told the disciples about the signs of the end? Matthew gives us the detail that he was meeting with his disciples privately on the Mount of Olives, the very place where he will come the second time. And isn't that a beautiful irony? In Matthew, in chapter 24, we have a record of all the things Jesus said would happen at the end of the age before his second coming. And we don't have time to read the whole chapter right now, but I recommend that you take a few moments today to read the whole thing. Here are just a few verses that help us to gain an understanding of what to expect, starting with verse four. And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended and betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. You know, we've seen these things that Jesus is describing here for thousands of years now. Wars, famines, earthquakes, pestilences, in fact, we are living through a pestilence right now. And my parents lived through World War II. But the end has not come yet, though we can certainly feel it approaching. So what should we be doing while we wait for Jesus to return? Matthew 24, 14 reminds us that we should be preaching the gospel. We should be telling others about Jesus' soon return. According to Jesus, the end comes when everyone has heard. 
God wants to save as many people as he possibly can. And perhaps that helps to explain the delay in his coming. Also, we should not be passively waiting. We should be watching. And watching is active. We need to be actively watching as we wait for his return. Jesus also said that the love of many will grow cold and that people would hate each other. And perhaps that's why Peter gave us some advice as he was writing his first letter. And I'm so glad that this letter has been preserved for us to hear, those of us who are living right at the end of time. 1 Peter 4, 7 through 11 gives us clear instruction about how we should be watching and waiting. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. I love how Peter starts these comments with a very simple statement, the end of all things is near. And then everything he says after that is part of the therefore. So if the end of all things is near, how is it that we should be living? So he says, therefore, and gives us a really great description of how we should be living now. That we would have love for the others of around, around us, that we would offer God all of our gifts. So let's actively watch and tell others about the kingdom and above all, love each other deeply. Stay tuned, I'll be right back. Welcome back. I am so pleased that joining me now is Keith Carlin. He is our project manager for the new facility on Wallula Road. And Keith, you do a lot of volunteering at Blue Mountain Television, <laughs> and you have this very special role right now. And I'm just excited to have you here because you can share with our viewers updates that are, that are beyond what I, I know how to share. And so this is just a great opportunity. We've got to find out what's the latest with the move to the new facility. Well, the latest is that about uh, nine minutes ago, I think it was, or a little more maybe, I was called and said, are you gonna join us for the interview today? I was at Wallula. <laughs> you were, you're so busy, you hadn't gotten we, here We uh, are repairing equipment so that we'll be ready for what's going to be tomorrow for us now, but what is going to be in the past already when the folks are actually viewing this. Yes. Because on October 20, Wallula is going to see the faces of, I hope, eight Walla Walla University students coming to help us demolish, whoo, that's a terrible word, <laughs> internal partitions that are non-supporting that we need out of the way to make room for our studio facility and the storage area that we'll be associating with it. I love this term, <laughs> partitions that are not, what was the term? Non-supporting. Non non-supporting partitions, yes. walls. Walls, call them walls if you wish, yes. <laughs> the uh, folks in the know or the engineers actually use the term partitions because they're non-supporting. Yes. Walls support, partitions don't. Yes, okay. And these are parts of the old church uh, function near around the, uh, the pulpit, the uh, front 
of the church. Yeah, so we're talking about what was the sanctuary area yes. in the building that we have purchased, which right. now is going to be a studio area. It's becoming a studio it area. It is becoming. We've already worked a lot on the flooring. Oh, we've had so many volunteers in there already. We so much appreciate what they came in and did, pulling all of that carpet off the floor. I think Daniel got some pictures of that you may have already shown. And those were people, young people that came in to help us older guys, and they really did the pulling and it was marvelous it really was and we have a lot more opportunity for that kind of thing in the future speaking because of pulling you've been pulling something else out of the partitions <laughs> yes we, Jim Forsyth and I spent uh, about two days taking electrical wiring out of these partitions that are coming out and out of the walls that are behind them because we're not going to be using any of that for the previous purposes Yes, All and we don't this, want that to be in there when students come to help us take that, those partitions that's down. That's why we have them out. It's totally devoid of any danger to the students from any electrical or plumbing. Mm -hmm. And Jim took a lot of the plumbing out. Uh, it didn't help him with any of that. He got all of that done himself. And then he and I worked together to pull out this metal shielded uh, wiring that was in the walls. It's an old type of wiring called BX. And it's stuff I used to work with as an electrician years ago. And I hadn't seen any of it for years. But here it is in this building that was built in something like a 10 years ago now. So it's a fairly modern building. Yes. Uh, we love that modern building. <laughs> it's, it's so nice to have a building that is not old. It's, it is it's a nice. Young building. It's well built. It's a pleasure to work with it. Yeah. So anyway, yes, Jim and I pulled out the electrical and we're just about ready now to pull out the baptistry. Jim already did pull out all of the plumbing features, the showers, the sinks, the toilets, out of the areas on either side of the baptistry that are used in every church that has a baptistry, you know, the, the rooms. Yes. <laughs> all of that's out. And now all of the electrical is out. And so once we get these partitions down that the students are going to help us do for us tomorrow, for the viewers yesterday or whenever, yes. <laughs> it's going to be cleared out so that we can then start actually making the changes that we need to put up a new wall across some of that same area for storage for our units that we'll be putting, keeping in the background behind the scene for our studio use. Yes. So how, I mean, how are we allowed to do these demolition things? We oh, have to have we a have a sheet that? of paper that is on file with the county that they charged us for, of course, yes. <laughs> fees for everything nowadays, that we have that on display in a little box as, as they require. So we got the demolition permit. Yes. That was on the 24th of uh, September. Yes. And so we've had that a while, and we've been filling up a huge dumpster that's out in front of the building. I noticed it. I drove past, the, uh, well, this weekend I went past at least twice and saw it there. Yeah. yeah, and it's getting more and more in it. And by the time the students have had the opportunity to rip it up on those walls, there'll be a lot more in it. Yes. And we're looking forward to being able to probably demolish just about everything and put it into there and not have to have a second load. We'll see. But if we have to, we do it. Sure. Now, what about, you just mentioned the baptistry, the toilets, the showers, the sinks, things that we would really like to have another use for. We, we don't need them at the television no, station. No, we need somebody else to need them. Yes, we don't want to just throw them away. <laughs> then we uh, found somebody through Maranatha yes. that needs this. They're building a new church. It's in Missouri, mm -hmm. the show me state. Well, we're going to show them that we can help. And this is a real privilege for us and a real relief to us to have them going somewhere where we don't have to worry about them being recycled or anything. They're going to actually go into use. Yeah, it's and just, that it's is just so wonderful and, and that it can be part of their project. And so we're able to just yes. donate these to their project and they're doing something on their end as well. They're coming to pick them up. They so are actually, providing well, transportation. a shipping arrangement is yes. being made that will deliver that we don't it to have them. To worry about. But Maranatha is coordinating that shipping. Yes. 
And so we're benefiting by Maranatha services as well. Absolutely. And it's just like marvelous. a three-way partnership. It is. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very useful and workable one. So we are we have that floor fairly well cleared off. I still have, I was in the process of trying to uh, clear it up a little bit more this morning as I was there trying to finish things up, repairing the ladder, getting it ready to set up. I already had one in place. Jim has one in place. Jim has another one at home he's gonna bring. And I have the two extension ladders and I'm gonna bring over a 10 foot step ladder for, that I have out at our Yuma Pine Church right at the moment. And so we'll have plenty of, facilities for them to climb up and take these sheet rocks, uh, sheet rock surfaces off these walls that go way up to a 16 foot ceiling. Yes. And so that's why this is important to have uh, long ladders. It's important to be prepared. It's interesting to, to, you know, to realize that we have this great blessing of service day from Walla Walla University it and these students is. coming. And it also means we do some pre-work to we be ready to. for them to come and help us with the And with I the big think stuff. that we're pretty well at that point. I have one more item to take care of that I need to go out and purchase if the uh, executive committee will approve it, and that's a first aid kit for the facility. That was one of the conditions that well, we... Well, I'm one member, I'll approve that. Yeah, that, <laughs> you're the prime member. <laughs> anyway, that was one of the uh, conditions of having the students come is that we have a proper first aid kit on site for them in case of a problem. Sure. So I'll be going and purchasing that and making sure that's there tomorrow before they arrive. Very good. Let's see, what else is there? <laughs> well, I know that we're we're actually waiting on, you know, we just talked about a lot of demolition, but there's also another word that mm -hmm. kind of sounds more fun called construction. A and building permit. Yes. Yes, and we are in the process. We have actually started, the first step has been accomplished. It's called a pre-submission meeting or pre-application meeting that the county suggests, in fact, they actually require on any commercial facility, which we are. Mm -hmm. And we went into that with uh, expectations that it would not be too big a problem. There was zero problems. It went Good. beautifully. We checked all their boxes. <laughs> <laughs> and so that is in place, that's behind us. The next steps that I am going through right at the moment, I just talked yesterday with the contractors in uh, Spokane that will be providing, or could be one of those that would provide, don't know for sure who is gonna do it, a lighting grid support for the lights in the studio. Mm -hmm. I now have the weights on those pipe systems that are gonna be up there. There'll be three of them, two on the sides and one in the middle, a little higher. They're not light. The ones on the sides that are the smaller ones weigh 700 pounds each, and the middle one weighs 1,400 pounds. Okay, what are we supporting them from? Trusses. Yes. Trusses, oh, wait a minute. Do they have the strength to support them? So when Lowell has completed giving me a list of the weights of the lighting fixtures that are gonna be hung from that lighting grid, then I'll take that composite of information to the people that designed those trusses to begin with, or at least to an equivalent company right here in Walla Walla, and find out if those are adequate to support Yes. Now, in talking with the people at Spokane, they tell me, well, if you put a unistrut across multiple trusses and hook it to all of them, and then you pull it down, you can, you can actually support from that truss, mm. and you don't have to high, uh, drill into each, I mean, uh, into the unistrut is what we yes. actually be supporting from. Yes. Then you don't need to actually drill into the trusses themselves, except to mount the unistrut piece. Mm -hmm. And so you're distributing the load. Right. beautifully across a bunch of trusses and this, uh, this is a good example of the details that, that that's what you, you pay me so much for about, uh, yeah <laughs> his huge volunteer salary uh, we have just a short bit of time left but something that maybe you could tell us briefly about something that happened just today that's really important you're talking the problem transmitter. Yes I am. We have one of our three transmitters that has been misbehaving like a tantrum child. Yes. Well, there's reasons for it to have been happening. It's old, it's out of date in design, mm -hmm. and it's 
aging performance is not acceptable, we are going to have to replace it. Yes. And Jim has been, uh, for yesterday and today, done, dem, uh, devoting the whole time to learning this process and what we can buy. He has found a very high qualified unit, actually two possibles, but one in particular that both he and I agree has all of the technical capabilities that are needed. Now, folks, this is something that requires money. Yes. A piece of change that's more than you spend at the dime store. We yes. need donations this to help. This is thousands of dollars. This yes. is close to ten thousand dollars. Yes. And by the time we're done, it may hit that with all the uh, stuff. I asked him this morning on the phone, is it going to be anything besides that eight thousand nine hundred dollars that we need to buy? And he says that depends. Well, mm -hmm. of course, it always depends, and that's the right answer from any engineer. <laughs> <laughs> and the executive committee has already uh, met electronically and voted that absolutely we have to purchase this transmitter because how Thank we must stay on the air. Thank you, Oh, that's but, wonderful news. But now news. this goes to the viewers, really, because we did not have, you know, close to $10,000 sitting around waiting for a new transmitter. No, we were not we expecting this to go down. No. So this is an additional cost, and, and so we're making, we're making an appeal to you. You can send a gift specifically marked new transmitter because we have to stay on the air. That's yes. one of the three that needs to be here because it services a, a large portion of the valley yes. from that one site. Yes, really important. So that's very important. Well, Keith, uh, unfortunately, we're out of time because I think the two of us could talk and talk about the great things that You mean that I are get happening. to go back to work? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll go right over to the new facility and keep working. I'm going back over there immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Really appreciate you taking a few minutes to, to share with us. My pleasure. And thank you for watching. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Welcome back. It's time now for an update in our station news segment. I've got to tell you about a program that's airing right now on Blue Mountain Television. It's Panorama of Prophecy, and perhaps you've already been watching it. It's the Prophecy Seminar with Doug Batchelor, and it's going to be broadcast and is being broadcast at a different time than the live presentation. So you need to make note of when you can see it on Blue Mountain Television. It's Sunday through Wednesday and also Friday at 5.30 p.m. So that's Sunday through Wednesday and Friday at 5.30 p.m. from now through November 23. But we will take a short break during our fall fundraiser. But then we'll get right back to it again. Now, for some details about the schedule, you can go to bmt.tv slash POP. That's for Panorama of po Prophecy. So visit our website there for the complete schedule. Here's a little description of what the program's like in case you're kind of wondering, do I want to tune in and watch that? It explores the pages of God's Word with Doug Batchelor, and it helps us to get a clear and trustworthy and logical answer to some of the most pressing questions that we have right now about life, about prophecy, about the last days. And you'll not only get this sort of life-changing panorama of what the future will bring, but you will also gain very practical tools about what you need to thrive, not just survive, in these challenging times. So I hope that you'll be tuning in to see Doug Batchelor on Panorama of Prophecy. Also, we want to let you know that we have a very special presentation of a film that tells the story of the early Seventh-day Adventist pioneers. It's called Tell the World. This is really a great drama that shares about the beginning of this faith movement. And it's going to be aired on Blue Mountain Television this Saturday evening at 7 p.m. Very, very special program, Saturday at 7 p.m., Tell the World. So hopefully you can tune in for that as well. And as you already learned when we were talking with Keith uh, about what's happening with the new facility, we've got volunteers during Walla Walla University's service day coming to our new facility to help us with some of our demolition. And it's just so exciting for us to see these college students involved in what we're doing at Blue Mountain Television. And then finally, I've got to remind you about something you need for your calendar, and that is the fall fundraiser. I know many of you have already marked it on your calendar, so you're saying, how come she's reminding us to do that again? But some of you are just hearing this for the first time and maybe haven't marked it. November 7 through 9, those are the important dates, 6 to 10 p.m. And yes, we're going to be having some fantastic programming for you during that share time because our special guest 
here at Blue Mountain Television for our fall fundraiser is James Rafferty. And you know, he's a favorite speaker of, of us here at Blue Mountain Television and of many of you as well, I'm sure. So James Rafferty is going to be with us during the share -thon sharing our, or fall fundraiser as we're calling it, sharing some really, really important things. And along with him will be his wife, Reese Rafferty, and she's going to be sharing some health nuggets. And, and I'm really looking forward to that as well because she is so knowledgeable in that area and I know we could all use some good tips for keeping our health at its best. So looking forward to the Rafferty's being here and also there's gonna be music and some very unique and special music for Blue Mountain Television from the Advent Heralds. I'm really excited about them being a part of our fall fundraiser too. So this is gonna be more than just raising funds. We're gonna have a lot of really great and important spiritual content to share with you during our fall fundraiser. And so we're looking forward to having you tune into that so that you will receive a blessing and then also so that you can give a blessing back to Blue Mountain Television. We mentioned last week that our operating funds are in a very critical place right now. And earlier in the show today, you learned that now we have an additional, probably close to $10,000 for a transmitter that we were not expecting. Those funds simply do not exist at Blue Mountain Television. And so we really, really need to hear from you. And I, I just wanna be very candid with you and let you know that we're not just putting out platitudes or just saying the same thing every week on this show. I'm, I'm saying these things to you because we truly need your gifts for our operating budget, for this transmitter, and of course also for the new facility. Over many, many years, over 30 years, this valley and you as a member of this valley have contributed to and made Blue Mountain Television stay on the air with God's blessing. And so you're very, very important and I thank you for what you're going to do, what you have done, what you're planning to do during our fall fundraiser, and how you might be able to help with this urgent need that we have right now with the transmitter. Thank you so much. And thank you for praying for this ministry. That as well is very valuable to us, and we're so grateful. And I wanna thank you for watching the show today. I appreciate you tuning in, and I hope to see you next time.